at the Wizard World Convention in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I have the pleasure of uh, chatting with Betty and Larry Elmore. Um, Larry is one of the most amazing Dungeons and Dragons artists. I, 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 going back to uh, the 80s when he first started uh, 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 working for Dungeons and Dragons TSR, um, he's been Dungeons and Dragons to me in terms of artwork. So I am, um, and since I've got Valentine's Day coming up and uh, his lovely wife is here, I just had to get them both in on the interview. So um, Betty, tell me how you met. Well, <laughs> uh, Larry was, asked my sister out because um, there were six girls of us, and he didn't know who was who, but he liked Bev. Well, no, there were six sisters, <laughs> and they were all cute. But I, I couldn't already tell some of them apart. They were all close to the same age. So, so, so he asked my sister Bev out, and she wasn't old enough today because we right. had to be 16. So he, so she said, but my sister Betty can. He said, well, okay. He said, she, does she look like you? And Bev said, yes, and she doesn't. But, <laughs> she uh, looks close enough. <laughs> but anyway, so... Uh, um, I call you. So he called me and asked me out, and I said sure, but I didn't want to go because he was a cocky little fellow. <laughs> and, uh, I wore a little cocky hat and little drove a little cocky, hot rod. Drove a hot rod, and I'm more down to earth and don't go into that kind of stuff. So she begged me to go with him because she thought I would have a lot of Actually, fun. Actually, she was more like me then. Yeah, she was my kid. <laughs> She still is more like him. <laughs> so, um, so she, she, her friends begged me to go with him because they knew I would just have a lot of fun. And so he came to pick me up, and my sister Bev decided to play a trick on him. So she had all of her friends there, and all my other all sisters, sisters, and all my brothers, and they like, were all in the living room. There's nine there. children, not counting all the friends. So when Larry got there, he didn't know which was me and wanted to know which was Betty. So then I walked out of the bedroom and. And, that's and I, I guess city. that's the one I'm supposed to have a date with, you know, so I didn't know. We dated for about six years and got married in 1971. And, and been married ever since. Been married ever since. So uh, what was Larry doing when you met? He was he was in his first year of college at Western Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, he was an artist. They're at Bowling Green. Yeah. Yeah, Western Western promotion, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shout Western out to Kentucky. Bowling Green. And Western Kentucky a, University. Yeah, yeah. And I was a senior in high school, so yeah. I was still in high school. Excellent. So, uh, what did your father think about Larry? Um, he liked him, but they didn't, think, <laughs> they didn't think he would ever amount to anything. Yeah. They said, Betty, he'll be pumping gas. <laughs> <laughs> He'll never be able to support you. And um, but I wasn't worried about that. I was just 17. So yeah, I was really, so, wasn't worried about so it. I wasn't worried about that. And but, he was a hump. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? I weighed about 98 pounds. I was a skinny little guy. Yeah. Yeah. I was skinny. He was skinny. Glasses. Yeah. When I when I got our army, uh, I was 20 what 23. Yeah. And I weighed uh, about 105 pounds. Uh -huh. I was a little guy, I was full of energy, and just a little wiry guy. I was always that way. And then as I got about 30, I started gaining weight. <laughs> a lot of sitting and painting and stuff, you know, and not, not enough exercise. So what did you do in the military? Uh, well, I was, uh, I worked sort of as an illustrator, but I was in the combat engineer unit, and um, I drove an APC, a command track, and uh -huh. um, it was fun. I mean, I was stationed in Germany. I didn't go to Vietnam because they all said I was so little I'd be a good Vietnam tunnel rat, you know. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. But anyway, I ended up, I got lucky and got sent to Germany. And then Castles. I went over there for Yeah, then, then I was we got there. married and brought her over for a year. So we lived over there together. Ran around Europe in an old Volkswagen. But I had to push because it wouldn't start. <laughs> Yeah, we had to park on a hill. Yeah. <laughs> I bought the Volkswagen over there for fifty dollars, and and, um, and if you didn't park it on a hill, then she'd have to push it. <laughs> I'd pop the clutch and take off, so she'd jump in the car. And we'd take off. <laughs> we were young. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, interesting. Uh, so, what, what, now that uh, 
Uh, I have to ask, what did you do when uh, you were in Germany, Betty? I worked. You got a job. Yeah. I got a job. At the FX. Called, uh, you know, it was called a pickup point. Yeah. And the guy, GIs would bring their laundry in, and I worked for a German lady, and we would send it to the laundry. Uh -huh. and, and, and they also developed film there. They developed film, and she sold cameras and camera equipment. So she and she that. always hired, she'd pick out the prettiest American girls, because uh -huh. before she came over there, I'd hang out over there because there's always pretty girls there. <laughs> There's American girls. And then when my wife got there, she hired Betty to work uh -huh. there. Okay. I went in with him one day to take his laundry, and yeah. she asked me if I wanted to work, and I'd always worked, uh -huh. so I said yes. So she and I and her daughter worked there. Yeah. And, awesome. And the guys would come there and pick up their laundry. and She got uh -huh. to all the GIs and battalion. That was fun. Yeah. But they would get me drunk on that German liquor. <laughs> <laughs> Schnapps? Yeah, yeah so it was real thick. Yeah, but I didn't. <laughs> and I never drank before. I was a good girl. Good was, Catholic. I was, I was a good Catholic girl. I never drank till we went to Germany. Yeah. And, uh, yeah we got her messed up a few times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Before that, it had just been wine on Sundays. Yeah. That's yeah, it. that's right. Well, no, then back then they didn't even do that. <laughs> Not real wine. Really. Nothing. You didn't, you didn't drink it. Yeah, it's a priest. Yeah. Parishioners. Yeah. So tell me, how, uh, how did you end up working for TSR? I was working, I got out of the Army and I got a job as an illustrator at TSR. I was working in civil service. And um, and I was doing fantasy art already. I never, well, when I got a job there, Dungeons & Dragons didn't exist. But after a few years, we hired a new guy in and he was playing this weird game. Mm -hmm. He wanted us to play. He wanted all the other artists there to mm -hmm. play. And we thought he was sort of crazy. And finally, he talked us into playing a game. It was called Dungeons & Dragons. It was a ball of fun. We enjoyed mm -hmm. it. And, he actually sent my samples in uh -huh. to TSR, uh -huh. and uh, they called me up and gave me a freelance job, and I did that. And then they called me up and wanted to hire me, and this was like in 1980. And during 81, they sort of they called me back and forth. They took me up to Wisconsin, we live in Kentucky. Took, took me up to Wisconsin, we toured the place. And then uh, I still said no, I come back home, and then the president of the company at that time was Kevin Bloom. He flew down to Kentucky and came to our house and basically bought us, <laughs> gave us enough money. <laughs> us an offer we couldn't, we couldn't refuse, so we, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, we moved to Wisconsin and I started working for TSR. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what did you do for uh, TSR, buddy? Well, they gave me a job also, making more than I was probably worth because of Larry. <laughs> but uh, so I was uh, assistant. I was a uh, administrative yeah. assistant yeah. to the VP of the company. Mm -hmm. I worked for Michael Gray and Dave Sutherland. And um, so then I felt like I wasn't earning my money uh -huh. because I didn't do anything. I would mm -hmm. eat M and M's all day <laughs> and See, play crossword it. puzzles. <laughs> and, uh, so I went to the director of uh, printing and all that of, uh, typesetting department, right. Betty Marban, and I asked her to give me a shot uh, as a typesetter. Right. And I always loved to type, so, so you type I, a Z in words a minute. So, you know. so I did that. And so then I got to work with the editors and all that. So then I felt like I was worth my pay. Yeah. But I did that until we, till I, till he retired from there. And then or I quit from there. Quit from there. <laughs> and then I quit also. So, um, we were talking about bowls earlier. Bowls? <laughs> bowls, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe it was Larry who was talking about bowls. No. Well. Don't want to talk about bowls, huh? I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I thought it was kind of cute. Well, anyone that knows us knows that Larry paints and I work. So I do everything. So one day at, I would go into work at seven, and Larry would come in at nine. Because we had so flex time. We had flex time. In. So I, he came into work one day, complaining that when he got up to come to work, there were no clean bowls to, to eat, eat cereal. my cereal. <laughs> so he'd come in there to the, uh, his department was right next door to my department. So he came in there fussing because there were no bowls, no clean bowls. So I made a list of everything I'd been doing for la the last week, uh -huh. besides painting. <laughs> and, um, and then I went out and bought about 30 bowls, and I put the note and the bowls on his art table in the art department. <laughs> so he knew he was in trouble. So he, um, so 
Oh, oh, so then in about the next day, they called me from the front office and said there was a flower delivery downstairs for me, or that afternoon. That afternoon. And I said, I'm not, I don't want any flowers. He, I'm not going to forgive him that easy, you know. I guess he looked at the list and decided I had been working hard. <laughs> anyway, so they finally brought the flowers up to me because I wouldn't go down and pick them up. <laughs> I knew uh, I was in trouble. <laughs> I just laid low. <laughs> you knew you deserved whatever you yeah, had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mercy is, is sometimes a good thing. That's right. <laughs> but he does work hard, but he does paint all the time. That's yeah. what he does. I tell you, art is a time consuming occupation. It, it really is. Oh, absolutely. Being creative is hard. Yeah, it is. <laughs> So what, what do you have going on currently, Larry? Well, right now, I'm finally at the point in my career where I've always wanted to be. I've, I've finally figured out a way to get booked up doing the art I want to do, which is still fantasy. It's not something different. But for all my years, I worked as an illustrator, which means I'm illustrating other people's products or ideas yeah. or something. I've always had plenty of good ideas that I wanted to do. But trying to figure out a way to get booked up, to get scheduled ahead, to keep mm -hmm. working, for your own work was difficult, but, but I finally figured out a way to do it. And so now I'm booked up for the next year or so doing my own art, and it's all pre-sold. So I finish one of painting and get paid and start another one. But it's what I want to do, not not being told what to do or or a product to sell or something. Right. So I'm very, very happy. This, and I'm probably doing the best paintings of my career right now, technically the best paintings. Of course, none of them will have the sentimental value as the old red dragon or something. <laughs> <laughs> you made, you've made some of the most gorgeous dragons uh, I've ever. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love your artwork. Um, I tell you what, um, if there were one question I could ask you that would get a really interesting story out of you, what would that interesting story be that I wouldn't even know to ask? Oh, uh, there's so many stories, especially when I worked at TSR. And a lot of people like TSR stories, but. Uh, uh, well, it was crazy, and, and we got a bunch of artists in one room working together, one big room. And one day, they, they'd always bring us in pencils or pens and stuff, uh, just whatever got sit, given to everybody in the place. And someone brought in a big box of rubber bands for every artist, and there was every kind of rubber band. So they sat on our desk for a long time. We had no use for them. Right. Finally, someone opened them up, and we started a rubber band fight. And we would have these horrible rubber band fights that would last for an hour or so. And we'd really aim for each other's wet paintings, try to slide a rubber band across that. So make you have to we'll start correct over it. it. Yeah. Uh, or we'd shoot for a palette and sling oil paint. Or we would shoot for the guy's brushes and hit the top of his brush and it all turn over. And we was having a big fight one time and the president of the company was taking a Japanese tour through. Oh, no. Uh, and they were in her department. Well, on her side of the wall, there's like four gigantic windows that you could look right through and see us. Well, somebody, <laughs> one of the artists, it might have been uh, Keith Parker, said, go back to your desk, go back to your desk. He wasn't moving his mouth much while he was saying this. I'm like, what? He said, they're watching this. I glanced up and there was the president of the company in the Japanese looking at one of those mirrors, watching us have this big room. <laughs> so we all sort of work our way slowly back to our desk and start painting it. Then a few minutes later here they came in with the tour group and we're like, and this is our art department. Sometimes they work, you know, going on. I thought we was all gonna be in bad trouble, but nothing happened, so but we had a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Larry and Betty, you two are awesome. I, I really appreciated it. And uh, will I see you at Gen Con this year? Yes. Awesome. Okay. You are you gonna be there, Betty? I don't Maybe. Know. She might. If he can find, I don't go if he has help. But uh -huh. If he doesn't have help, then I go. Some of the people I've been relying on is things happening in their families that they can't do, so I might have to, maybe have to get some others or might, might draft her into coming. You know? If I come, we're hoping that the kid, that our children will come to visit us later. Maybe you'll see the whole family. That'd be awesome. Very cool. Well, from Wizard World 2012 in New Orleans, Louisiana, this is The Weird Review with Betty and Larry Elmore. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.